Okay, today I'm going to be showing you that explosions can happen in a vacuum. So I've shown in previous videos that when you try to light something on fire in a vacuum, it doesn't work because you've removed all of the oxygen, so there's no reaction that can happen when you don't have oxygen. So regular combustion does not happen in a vacuum because you've lost the air, you've lost the oxygen around it, and so the oxygen can't react with the combustible material. But if you use some type of explosive, then those oxygen atoms aren't needed because the oxygen atoms or nitrogen atoms to react with the material are already in the material itself. So my goal today is to show you the explosion without any smoke, without anything obscuring it, without filling the vacuum with any smoke so you don't say that it's raising the pressure at all. I want it to be a complete vacuum and I want the explosion to happen instantaneously with no smoke. And the perfect material for that is called silver fulminate. So silver fulminate is extremely explosive and extremely sensitive. It can be triggered by electricity, heat, pressure, and even just impact. In fact, the impact of a single feather falling or a water droplet is enough to explosively detonate it. So the fulminate ion decomposes into CO2 and nitrogen. And because it's essentially reacting with itself, it doesn't need oxygen at all. It just needs something to pressurize it, something to trigger it, and then it will explode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some silver fulminate in my vacuum chamber, and then I'm gonna drop this lead ball on it and see if it actually explodes. So silver fulminate is so explosive, so reacted, that it has very limited applications. Even in the military, they don't use it. In fact, it really has only one use and it may be surprising what it's used for. Poppets. <laughs> so can you believe it? One of the most dangerous, most explosive, most sensitive explosives out there is used in poppets that your children play with. But there's actually only an extremely small amount of the fulminate ion in each poppet. There's only about 80 micrograms, and it's so sensitive that all you have to do is drop it, and then it explodes. Okay, let's start up the pump and see if we can get an explosion in the vacuum chamber. Three, two, one. Okay, halfway there. Okay, we are at full vacuum now. Let's go ahead and test if they're gonna explode in the vacuum chamber. Here we go. Okay, three, two, one. Strong magnet. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, one, two, three. Holy cow, it totally exploded. That was awesome. Look at that. You can even see the fire when it exploded. You can see the burn marks on the paper. So there was fire in the vacuum. That's awesome. <laughs> Just with some simple pop rocks, you could see that there's definitely can be fire in a vacuum. There can be explosions in a vacuum, which means of course there can be rockets in a vacuum. Okay, let's let the air back in. Three, two, one. So there you go, easily burn the paper and turn these small little pebbles in here into projectiles. So two things we learned from this. The first is that yes, you can have fire and explosions in a vacuum. If not, rockets wouldn't work in space. And also you can have propulsion in space. You can see that explosions push things in space because it pushes things away from the exploding gas or the expanding gas. And that's how rocket ships work. The gas is expanding one way and it's pushing the rocket the other way. It's like a controlled explosion that's pushing the rocket like a projectile. Instead of small pebbles, it's a big rocket. Okay, and finally one more test, just to show that projectiles can be launched in a vacuum, not just because they were sitting on the floor and they pushed off the floor. Even when they're suspended in the vacuum with nothing around them to push off of, they're actually just pushing off of the explosive gases, they'll still make projectiles fly. Okay, let's get it down under full vacuum first. Three, two, one. Okay, we are at full vacuum once again. 
See if the laser can actually heat it up hot enough. Three, two, one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no sound whatsoever. That was awesome. <laughs> and sure enough, everything went flying. So if fulminate is so dangerous and so unstable, then how can they use it in these poppets that most children everywhere have used before? Well, the number one reason is that they put in just a tiny amount, around 80 micrograms. And the other reason is they put in these large pebbles in, and so compared to the amount of explosive that's in it, this shrapnel can't go very fast. And so it keeps it to very low velocities, and so it leaves them safe to use. You can even pop them in your fingers and it doesn't really hurt. Hey everyone, if you haven't heard yet, I've teamed up with the creators of the Curiosity Box to make my very own Action Lab subscription box. So if you'd like to do the awesome experiments that you see me do on my channel, head over to theactionlab.com, click this link right here, and you can sign up for the Action Lab subscription box. And if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video is out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.